So this is another foundry car and this uh, this episode is entitled Hot Hearts versus Roadster versus Entry Sports Car for the beginning enthusiasts. So what would I recommend? It all depends on what you want. If you're single or you have a relationship without children and you're just enjoying life and you have a sunny climate then a roadster might be the best way to approach. If you're uh, a real uh, sports car enthusiast and you're attempting to do very good track times and you can afford it, you can afford it because sports cars and an empty sports cars might be quite costly. An empty sports car that's not extremely costly that I could give you an example would be an Audi TT or Fiat uh, Coupe Turbo, those are quite achievable, but they are also front wheel drive or in the TT also sometimes delivered as an all wheel drive. But if you look at, into the likes as a 911, which is in my opinion no longer an empty type of uh, sports car. You can also combine that, eh? the Roadster and the sports car, for example, low cities, and it could be a good entry uh, type of sports car. Okay, that being said, my heart lies with the Voltage. And why is that? Because it offers a lot of the trails of the sports car. Some even come out of an apart 595C, which is a Voltage, but also has a roof that can open. Also have the benefits of the Roadster. So then you have a Voltage with the practicality of a Voltage and also the cost of Voltage, which are also a lot lower. But still, you have the benefits of a roadster because you can open the roof, you can even have two people sitting in the back, so you have the benefit of a roadster plus, so not only a two-seater, but a two, two plus two, or even a four-seater like the Albart that I have. And the hot hatches, because of the hatchback, which my Albart does not have, it is more of a, a sedan saloon type of hatch because it has that uh, roof that can uh, collapse. That is compromising the hatch back functionality, but you can still top load, which also adds an additional benefit that a normal hatchback does not have. But back to the regular hatchback, like the Suzuki Swift Sport Hybrid that I'm driving at this moment, Setsi 33S, those have a hatch so that they can put the, the back seats uh, yeah, down, and then you have quite a cavernous space that you put put a lot of uh, stuff in if needed. Also this car seats five people very nicely. You still have a decent boot, it's not the biggest, I will never tell you that it's the biggest. But it is a good size boot, especially for the size of this car. It is quite frugal, quite low uh, on the maintenance. The acquisition costs are also not dramatic as you compare it to many other type of cars. Especially because the CO2 is reduced being a hybrid, so you have so many benefits and the experience is very nice. I think the whole touch in many, uh, many enthusiasts hands will give you more thrills than your uh, sports car does. The roadster, because the wind through your hair and uh, could be a little bit more direct and thereby better. Uh, for example, MX-5 is very nice, achievable roadster, but the whole touch will deliver all the time and also offers additional safety so for example a roadster is often so easy to open because people want to take something out of the car they can just cut it open and have access whereas they have to break a window for a regular type of roof also in case of a crash or a flip over you will be a lot safer in a regular type of roof of course now Bart again has the benefit that those pillars are still maintained, so you have added a rollover safety there, but still the roof can be opened quite easily by a criminal. The other benefit of, uh, of a hot hatch is often that they come with five doors, so if you have children this is a very good thing. So if it's raining you don't have to get out of the car and put your uh, uh, seat uh, up front like you have to do in a 911 and then uh, get your ch children in a very cramped environment. In a hot hatch you will have plenty of room also for your children and easy access as well. But that being said, if you want even more practical uh, benefits, 
went to a hotel stands one man, so that's the power station. So the power station is a station where which is efficient power to also be yeah, nice and, and, and sporting and have a little bit of the voltage characteristics. So some uh, power station wagons like the Skoda, Octavia, RS station wagon form have the engine or for example uh, a VW Volkswagen Golf GTI but then in a roomier body which can be beneficial. They have all the benefits of a normal auto hatch but added uh, room because of being a station wagon. But it can also be other type of cars like an RS4 of Audi, RS6, they are like uber, uber uh, station wagons. So they are very fast, they are sports car fast but still offer the functionality of a station wagon. And those cars are oftentimes also a lot more costly of course, but you could consider. And especially uh, turbocharged station wagon and hot hatches are a very good bet because with a simple tune, a chip tune, you cannot alter only the fuel, uh, yeah, the fuel characteristics, so thereby adding horsepower and optimizing that for your engine. But you can also increase the turbo pressure, which again feeds in more air and the engine goes from air and fuel to power. So you can imagine that the gains are a lot better than with a naturally aspirated engine. Well, hope this helps. Foundry car, out. So this is not a foundry car and this will be titled French with benefits. But it's not, it is not, I repeat, it's not the classical uh, French with benefits as you see oftentimes around you or hear about that they have a friend which they also have sexual intercourse or sexual relationship with without being a real yeah, part of a life, partner, spouse, etc. It's not that. So what is it? Friends with benefits is if you have friends that uh, yeah, can help you succeed in life, they can support you, they can also uh, stimulate you, and they have uh, similar thoughts, uh, similar missions that will be stimulating because you will have some downfalls. If you're an entrepreneur and you have also some friends that are also entrepreneurial, could be just in spirit, could also be in practice, those can help you. Perhaps they even have some uh, work for you if your work is collapsing at the moment. So that is a very good thing to have. You have some network around you, but also some friends can be a mentor. They can just offer you life advice and help you advance and to become a better version of yourself. You can have friends that can help you to stop with uh, wrong habits. Yeah, for example, if you're smoking and your friends are smoking, they will stimulate you to keep on smoking. If you're smoking and friends around you are not smoking, <laughs> this will also stimulate you to stop that habit. So that saves your health, saves your costs, etc. And also saves your environment for that exposure, but also those burdens, financial burdens and health burdens. So those are things that are really beneficial and should be cherished in my opinion. Hope this helps. Foundering car, out. So another foundering car and today we will discuss mind over matter. And why is that? Because oftentimes also in the businesses that I, uh, I help to, to support, you see that the technology where you start with is not the technology where you end with. But uh, the personnel that you are starting with, if they are very driven and they have a good mindset, they are likely to overcome a lot of troubles and you might wind up with a completely different product or at least uh, a wild iteration on the original ID that still is successful. Whereas the ID might be very successful without a good team, you will be in big trouble. So that is not only uh, related to the example that I gave, namely uh, that of a biotechnology entrepreneur, but it's universally applicable. So in life, in business, in relationships, if you put your mind at ease or you 
you you might get a little bit uh, yeah, cuddle to sleep but if you put your mind in a state that you need to improve and improve you will keep improving and also in your relationship also in your life this will get you so it will get you a little bit out of your comfort zone that you don't take everything from you for granted I don't think you need take everything uh, for granted I think is a bad thing but it will trigger you to improve upon yourself which is a very good thing and by improving upon yourself you will also improve upon your life and those that are in your circle of life so also your family your spouse your children your uh, employees your uh, employer your colleagues benefit because you improve upon yourself and some people might say uh, try to hinder you because they like the old you more but oftentimes those people are toxic and they might not know it themselves but they are toxic but they want to keep you in that original state and oftentimes because of fear because they are uh, fearful that you are growing while they are stuck and you will grow out of each other's uh, yeah. you, you get different uh, fantasies that you want to uh, approach you have different mindsets you will get into different lives and that they are fearing and also because you are doing that you show them what they are not doing and they also don't like that because they like their comfort and they don't want that to be disrupted. Well, people that love you oftentimes will just stimulate you, even though they might not want to do it themselves. They love it that you can be successful in that way. So also there, mind over matter. It could be that some people are a lot more successful than you are. But sometimes those people are not there to help you because they want to stay in that superior state. So you might say, eh, if you look at how successful they are, I will take that advice and apply that to my life. But if they are not having the best interest in you, they might want to keep you down, they might want you to stay down, whereas other people that are really successful and also are loving and wanting you to succeed, they will stimulate you. Even some people that have not been successful, they can turn you away from bad decisions because they can tell you from their own example, I did this and that turned my life around in a negative way. Yeah? mind over matter. You can learn a lot from people who were successful, but you can also learn a lot from people that were not. And you can see the differences between them. And also, if you come from a poor background, so working background, my father was also a, a painter of houses, he was very good at it, but it's not the normal father or the average father of someone who goes to the university or even do, does a PhD like I did. So you can outgrow that and my father stimulated my well-being, my growth, etc. And that's something that can really make a difference. So there are some points that I wanted to uh, put across. I hope they help you a little bit. Put the sunglasses on because the sun is shining quite uh, strongly all of a sudden. And I wish you a very nice day. And I hope these thoughts just trigger something in you. And if they don't, they don't. You can also dislike this video, I don't care. But I hope they can just bring some sunshine also to your life. Founder and car, out. This is another founder car and uh, again a little bit more towards uh, yeah, EDC, everyday carry, but the spirit behind that, just to think if you can do something that makes your life better, especially 
when the conditions are uh, becoming a little bit more detrimental, especially in the finance department, because things are getting expensive. Energy is getting very expensive, but also food. So the cost of living is becoming very high. And in the past, people also had these uh, things to overcome. And people can overcome a lot, yeah? especially if you keep faith. Then you can go through dire situations, especially if you believe, believe in God that will help you. But back to the topic, in the past people also kept uh, some animals at, at their home. For example, my granddad had uh, uh, chickens. Chickens produce eggs, of course, but also can be used as a source of meat or trade, uh, something to trade. But also he kept a pig. So he bought a small piglet and then fed that pig with yeah, just uh, natural waste. So things out of the garden, but also things that the, uh, the people did not eat anymore yeah, or would otherwise go to waste. That's, that's the reason why uh, the, we all know the description of a piggy, piggy bag. Yes? It's, it's, so a piggy bank is something that you where you save some little coins in and when the time is needed you break the piggy. In the past they were uh, made of uh, ceramics. And uh, when you break it, of course you sacrifice the piggy. And then you can get access to the coins for example that are in size. And it was was in the past a reality, so they had a pig and they put uh, things into the pig, eh? sometimes food that they uh, could use if they don't have enough waste, but oftentimes waste, so pocket money so to say, but when the time uh, would rise they could slaughter the pig and then get uh, meat out of that. It could be even better if you have a pig. Pig which you uh, you get pregnant, so you, you use a boar to mount to the bassoon, and that uh, results in little piglets again. Then you have something that produces something, and eh? without uh, a pig on itself also produces meat, but you when once you sacrifice it, it's all gone. Eh? You can of course uh, sell a part again and then Can't get a new. For the amount of meat that you produce, that could also be a reason. But if you could Verlaat produce your own little piglets, this is a good thing. But there are other animals, like chickens that I mentioned, that produce also without uh, the needs to be sacrificed. So for example, chickens can produce little uh, chicks. Yeah? But even if you don't have a rooster, they still produce eggs. And eggs you can eat or sell or trade or whatever. And that's also the case, for example, with uh, a cow. So a cow, a cow can produce meat uh, on its own, so, so just bulking up. But also can produce calves, so little. Verlaat daarna de rotonde bij de eerste afrit en volg de M264 verder. So little uh, cows again, if you have also a bull that can, uh, can mount that cow and then produce again. But even if you don't have a bull, cows can produce milk. But oftentimes the cows produce uh, better milk Houd hier links aan. once Verlaat they are daarna de rotonde bij de eerste afrit. Uh, pregnant and uh, delivered a little cow, so oftentimes it goes hand in hand. And it's the same with goats. So goats can produce uh, meat and also uh, yeah, no, new uh, goats, but also goat milk. And a goat is a little bit smaller than a cow, so for example, you might not have the room for a cow, but perhaps you have the room for uh, uh, a goat or a few goats. That you even have your own uh, male goat and two uh, females, for example. That could be a good thing, huh? Or the other thing uh, is that uh, I mentioned a pig, but in the past pigs were very big. 
and that's uh, beneficial if you want to have big uh, amount of uh, meat gains but perhaps that is uh, it's too big for you but nowadays they also have very small pigs and if you are not keeping them for meat but for example selling them those small pigs often uh, get you premium over those uh, big ones which is a little bit contradictory but it's, it's the case because those small pigs can easier be used in a, a broader scale of environments so those are some examples and especially goats are very hardy you could also keep uh, sheep and sheep have the benefit that they also produce uh, fiber, for example wool. So if that's something that you like, you could look into that. There are also some goat breeds that uh, produce a little bit of fiber. Uh, some people also use the skin eh? so to, to make a coat out of something from a, a goat or a cow. Cow we all know, eh? cow leather uh, is one of the most used uh, sources of leather, if not the most. So for example your shoes and uh, your jacket, belts, they're all made of cow leather. But that could be a way to uh, approach this. But also there are some other things that you could consider. Eh? There are uh, smaller uh, mammals that are also uh, an option. For example rabbits or that can reproduce and produce meat. They don't produce milk or whatever. They have one of the richest milks but it's not suitable for humans or uh, guinea pigs even in some countries they also use them as a as a meat production it, it must be something that you are uh, down for because there are a lot more rodents like them for example rabbit is and there are literally a plethora of birds there are also some other mammals that you could look into but uh, for example uh, llamas that might be suitable for you but I mentioned the main I mentioned the main ones uh, you can also look into camels or uh, donkeys or horses they're all fine but they don't have the benefits that for example a similarly sized uh, cow or a goat uh, does have or even a pig so could of course be uh, considered and if you are more into those please do but they have less uh, production capabilities in that sense they might be better for other purposes eh, if you have to pull something they might be better than uh, bulls horses or uh, donkeys or mules eh, that are a little bit in between the horse and the donkey or if you want to ride them yourself, they are also better, so for passenger transport. So they have their own uh, benefits, but just pure as a production of meat or other sources, they are less uh, capable compared to the ones that I did mention. And what you see nowadays, it's a little bit of a horror to many people, is that you also see that there is more and more production of uh, insects. So what do they do? They, they, use, they use insects because they have, uh, insects have a lot less a demand of food compared to, uh, to other creatures. So they can live in very small uh, confinement because they are just insects. They can reproduce fast. They uh, and they are very effective in uh, converting feed to meat, so to say. So the feed conversion rate is very high, which is beneficial. So you need little amount of uh, food to give them and oftentimes insects are also not that picky so you can feed them a wide range of food and then they produce quite well the other thing is of course that they uh, you can eat everything of them because they don't have bones so for example most mammals when you are trying to eat them this is not so much the case with poultry you will lose a lot of weight because there's bones etc Poultry also have bones, but they are very light in uh, comparison to the, the rest and oftentimes they also have a very small head. So for example, if you compare the head of a chicken 
to the body size and you compare the head of a guinea pig to the body size so if you lose that part the guinea pig you will lose a lot of meat and, and weight and with a with the chicken you will lose minimum amount of uh, weight and meat so that's a big plus so to say if you look at from a meat conversion uh, viewpoint but insects you can eat whole and some people have uh, larva of many uh, type of insects which they just use over and over and use waste products on so it's a little bit like the pig you just put your waste in and those insects produce meat then for you but it's not uh, my cup of tea and many people it's not their cup of tea I've, I've tried some insects and they taste it kind of all right I, I, I thought them to be quite fatty in nature but it uh, could also be the type of insects on the other hand uh, shrimps etc are like insects eh? and we do eat them and we do love them and they're paying premium for eating them so it's also a little bit of a mindset uh, shift grasshopper for example or crickets i think would be a very nice source of meat from the insects that I did uh, eat, I like the crickets and the grasshopper the most. But they are not the animals kept uh, mostly for uh, meat production and, and being an insect. Hope the short video helps. Foundry car out. Good morning, another foundry car. This time again from the Zetsi 33S Suzuki Sport Hybrid. Driving it around uh, yeah, some rural areas, a little bit of city, a little bit of uh, yeah, more of a uh, agricultural uh, <laughs> environment. The Netherlands is uh, losing their farmers because their life is made uh, almost impossible due to they say. Uh, a nitrogen uh, crisis, the, before that the CO2 crisis and taxes that were based upon that. So there is an, a purpose that they want uh, yeah, to, to reduce these effects on the environment, they say. But it, uh, it might be that Verlaat they have the the bij de afrit. a uh, separate motive that is uh, going a lot further and that would be that they want what the farmers have namely the ground and they want to use it for other purposes uh, to, to hold uh, instead of animal cattle and farmland they want to use it for human cattle which they can tax or they they want to reduce the autonomy because farmers they are like regular people only farmers they can make their own food they can harvest their own food they can uh, have animals that produce products so they are self-sufficient in a way and those attributes together could be the reason that they uh, striving to reduce the farmers and if it's happening in the Netherlands which is I think the second biggest exporter of farm products worldwide it can happen on uh, <laughs> many uh, different levels in other countries as well and the thing is um, it could also be that they strive that the countries need to work together because one country has farmland and the other country has something else but this is playing with fire of course as we also seen in the Netherlands in the past the world wars especially world war ii they uh, yeah they had cities which were far less big as the cities that we have now in the Netherlands so the, the amount of people has risen in the Netherlands and the farmland has uh, decreased. Yeah. But in the past, 
people from the big cities they walked over to uh, the Brabant region, which is a farmers region, or Limburg region, or the regions uh, towards the uh, Zealand part of uh, Zeeland, as we call it in the Netherlands, or they went upwards to Groningen and Friesland. So all the agricultural parts they went to. And why is that? Because there was not enough food in the cities. And the cities, the cities don't produce anything, they are just consuming. Eh? They don't produce any uh, agricultural products, such as grain, or meat yeah, from animals, or eggs, etc. But in the agricultural parts they did, and they also had uh, flower uh, beets, so for example from tulips or other uh, flowers, they, because they were starving they even ate those bulbs. Huh? But if that land is now decreasing and they reintroduce it as, as land to build additional cities or uh, yeah, at least uh, municipalities where they are going to uh, put uh, a lot of people the amount of people in Netherlands will rise even further so the amount of people is rising and rising and the farmland is decreasing and decreasing so what would happen what would happen if there is uh, another war or there is something else that you cannot get the food from other countries or other countries are taxing you extremely high for that same food what will happen People will get into big problems, they, they will starve. Uh, even in a westernized country as Netherlands, this is really a, a big risk to take. Verlaat de rotonde bij de tweede afrit. And uh, because of that uh, mechanism, it combined with uh, the, the expenses that are rising, so the energy uh, prices are rising. There is a war already, yeah, in Ukraine, where Russia is uh, fighting, and also some of the other countries of Europe play a role because they supply uh, some parts. So it could, it could be that in a while uh, that war will come, it also will come here. And then what, what do you get? You will get a lot of troubles. A more important thing than what I just described is that the Bible tells us there will be, and there are the writers of the ap Apocalypse, and one of the writers is also uh, holding a, how do you say that? a balance to, 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 to weigh uh, things. And, and the thing is that they, uh, had a text accompanying it that you can put the, get the one liter of grain for uh, a day's work. So that one liter of grain will result in just enough food to come by. But you don't have a roof then, because you also have to pay for the roof. You cannot have days off anymore. You want a roof over your head, so a house. You need clothing, you need something to drink. Perhaps you need a source of energy, for example warmth, or you need to, for your day's work, you need to travel, you need a car or something else, that's all not included. So you can imagine, and if the Bible uh, tells us that, yeah, it's just a prophecy which will come true. So there will be big problems, and uh, reducing the amount of farmers will further uh, help spiral down in that downward spiral and of course there could be reasons eh? as the reason as, as I told you in the introduction but the effect the effect is negative it's very negative but everyone decides for it its own but it, it, it is something that uh, yeah just put some thoughts in my head which I wanted to share with you. It's not a, not a political view because you see this uh, is happening in, uh, in countries worldwide. It's just some thoughts 
that are popping in my mind. And, and of, sorry for that. And also some examples of the Netherlands what really happened in the past and can happen again or in a bigger, bigger scale, bigger problems. I hope this helps. Found a car. Out. Another founder in car, and today we'll discuss what the future will hold for uh, many yeah, people. I think the future will be a lot of debt because people want to sustain their living standard, but the income has been decreased due to inflation. Also, the expenses have increased due to inflation. So, the income may, might be the same for some people, but then the inflation you get a, a lot less in return. But also, some costs like energy are rising extremely high and uh, some companies or some branches are in bad weather, so hard weather, and they uh, will have trouble to sustain themselves, so there's a big chance that they will fall. So they will collapse and while collapsing, uh, their business opportunities also will collapse with them. So for example if you're an employee Slaan naar 200 meter af naar links en volg de N2. Your chances to be self-reliant and to be able to yeah, get your own income are diminishing. In some branches you also see that there's a rise. For example if you uh, you help people with debts I can imagine this can be a rising uh, part which will increase and increase. There's now a Tesla model 85D uh, besides me. I had the 90D, so wrong gear. So it will also be quite hard to, to get back there. But I can try again. <laughs> so it's a German car, so it will be quite hard to keep on pace. some space as you can see no refs being used otherwise he would have been in trouble but there's now a traffic jam as you can see so just giving you a little bit of a, a scoop here that's a more as it's extremely fast if he was uh, pushing down on the accelerator this is the first uh, generation pre phase lift I had the face lift but they already had the D so double engine that was quite a fast car. I had the 90D, which is a little bit uh, stronger still. But he uh, he did not extract the power that it had. Otherwise, I would not be <laughs> be there and uh, capable of uh, keeping my ground. But we, because he did not, and he underestimated this little car, he could be in uh, in in trouble. If I would just accelerate a little bit harder, I would close the gap. But I would not advise you to do so. In the past, when I was a youngster, perhaps I, uh, I was a little bit more competitive. But now, what is there to gain? Nothing is there to gain. You will have a bigger risk on a, an accident, etc. Lose your ego. Don't control your ego. That's a good thing to do. Uh, I get a telephone call. Foundry car, out. So another foundry car, and to see what uh, type of business will uh, flourish in this uh, recession, depression, if you want to call it like that, energy uh, uh, <laughs> problems, food uh, costs are rising, so everything that is uh, with energy on a more green level, so for example solar panel placement, that will go very good. So, Warmed uh, pump placement, air codes that are also able to heat, panels that are uh, able to have infrared heating. So everything that is uh, an alternative to gas, because natural gas is now being uh, more and more costly, will flourish. On the other hand, uh, natural gas prices may drop again, and then. Uh, also, the, the benefits of the electric uh, alternatives will wane a little bit more. So please take that into consideration. Everything that has to do with debt, 
there will at least be a lot of demand. It could be that uh, the price per hour or uh, the fees in total are not as good as they should be. So it could be, although the, the demand is high, because it is uh, currently uh, so restricted that they have a, a fixed set of hours per client per year that still the price per hour would not be advisable but that's something that will rise to the demand of I can also imagine that the demand for uh, smaller living spaces will rise why? because people cannot uh, pay normal uh, big houses anymore and the other thing is that a lot of people are uh, living a single life or short lived relationships so they don't need a permanent uh, living space for an entire family also they don't get uh, that much children anymore so all those trends will result in a different type of uh, yeah, situation that is needed to address that so if you can anticipate on that that's a good thing also things that can help the energy transition so if you for example have a system that uh, can be plug and play in the existing uh, gasoline powered uh, heated water type of uh, confectors if you have something that heats that uh, heats that system with air heated air or heated water in an electric sense this could be booming but it all depends on what uh, the future things will do. Also electric cars, yeah, they will be in high demand, especially if you give the people a car that they can uh, still pay. So a lot of electric cars are uh, very expensive. So although people might want to transfer to that, they don't have much choice. Only the Dacia Spring is, uh, I think, very achievable but it's a little bit limited in range and performance so it depends what type of person you are if that is uh, fulfilling your needs but that could be an, uh, a good entry as well but that's not something that you can develop yourself that easily because it takes a lot of time to develop and then you can uh, you can do this of course but it, it will be much more interesting perhaps if you have developed some kits that you can tra can uh, transfer the internal combustion engines so gasoline diesel uh, LPG powered engines and replace them with electric uh, ones or hybridize them with a smart hybrid system so that you can reduce food fuel costs on a, yeah, a limited scale on a people only need to replace the drivetrain instead of buying a completely new car. This could also be interesting for some cars that are a little bit older, so they have uh, engine wear and tear and that you can then replace them with electric drivetrains. So some trends to consider, Foundry car, out. So this is a Foundry car and this uh, topic will be about driving licenses. So what's the right mindset to obtain a driving license? Driving licenses that I have experience with are for the car. I'm driving a whole hatch right now, it's a Sears Sport Hybrid, Sensi 33S, but I also have my driving license for motorcycles, unrestricted, so the powerful ones as well. And the main thing is that you need to, even though the driving licenses are very restricted, that you have to do it a certain way, that you keep enjoying what you do. And why is that? Because you will have some setbacks, you will have some unpleasant, unpleasant times, you will pay a lot because per hour it, it costs quite a lot. But you have to take into consideration that you have to pay the instructor, you have to pay the exams, you have to pay for the car or the motorcycle and gasoline and insurance and all those things. So it will take quite some time, uh, like a, a work week. 40 hours, something like that could be the case, and it takes uh, quite some money. It could be, it could very well be that you pay 50 euros an hour, so that's 2,000 euros at least, and then you have to pay additional fees for the exams. So 2,000, 2,500 euros about the ballpark that you will spend. And 
then you only have your license, you still have to buy or rent or whatever your car or lend your car from someone else who has a car who lets you drive it or a motorcycle. But keep in mind that you enjoy it. If you don't, then you will have trouble with it. One of the faults that I made, I worked at the supermarket to help pay for these costs. And sometimes I had to uh, work 8 or 10 hours to have the money for one and a half hour of, uh, of driving lessons. So you, you, you went to school, went to university, it cost you a lot of time and then on top of that you did this uh, job eh? to, to get, uh, get some additional funding in and then you had to pay with all the time that you invested for the driving lessons but you also have your other expense you still have to pay for or have to work in addition so you need to do eight additional uh, hours of work each week to have one and a half hour additional time in the, in the car driving and those hours are not real hours they are hours of 50 minutes 45 minutes so one and a half uh, hours is a little bit over a real hour so please take that into consideration and then what I did, I was sometimes a little bit too tired so I could not enjoy the driving lesson as I should and then I was thinking I have to work this hard for doing this and all the time you were stuck in traffic jams or whatever the instructor was very uh, smart and all the time uh, directed us towards a very busy uh, time frame not spending gasoline, not spending uh, tires and all the other stuff but uh, that was something that I did not like that much but if you can enjoy it and also with a motorcycle sometimes you really have to drive in rain you at least do two hours uh, in a row every time because you need to get uh, accustomed also it feels a little uh, unnatural especially in slow, uh, slow speed turns and also that you yeah, you have only have two wheels you don't want to fall off also the implications if, if you uh, make a make a mishap happen or you do something wrong are quite big yeah? you're not uh, sitting into a cage you're out there you are alone no one else is going to hit the brakes or stabilize the car for you if something goes wrong you're on a motorcycle and you're exposed but then I, I also did my uh, driving license for the motorcycle in the winter and that are the, the, the worst conditions to do it of course. The benefit is that I could have a deduction in the price because not many people wanted to do their driving license for the motorcycle in the winter period but I did so I could reduce the cost but it was not the nicest uh, time frame. But I did enjoy that. I, I loved the feeling of uh, freedom and I loved all the... I loved all the, the, the speedy maneuvers. I did not like the, the slow maneuvers that much, but once you get the hang of it, you need to get it into your system, especially in the motorcycles. It should become natural. Uh, you don't have to think about it, you just do and react. That's the best thing to do it. Instead of thinking about all the rules all the time, get out of your head and get into your spine. That's, that's the thing I would recommend. Hope this helps you. Founder in car. And on motorcycle, out.